My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. I don't make friends. I'm just trying to save you a little money. My job is not just to entertain, but to teach you and put it all in context. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. All right, here's the way this market works. Something will be happening for weeks or even months on end, but most investors pay no attention whatsoever. By the time it dawns on them that something big is going on and they finally take action, it's either really late or it's already over. I know that sounds harsh, but on a day where the Dow declined 191 points, SSB shed 0.70% and the Nasdaq tumbled 1.17%. I want to prove to you that the stock market actually isn't rigged against you. It's just that so many of the so-called experts are constantly leading you astray. Let's not waste your time. Classic example, oil and gas. For more than a month, oil's been rallying like crazy. In the last six weeks, West Texas crude has gone from $67 to $84. But it's only today that I'm hearing that the oil stocks could be very interesting to buy. Now, I want you to imagine for a moment that you're in the CNBC Investing Club. Our philosophy is to look for situations where stocks don't reflect the value of the companies underneath. Remember, these are companies. We bought a bunch of oil stocks for the charitable trust when things were nasty and ugly. And it hurt for a while. But then oil and gas started coming back. We've been waiting patiently for Wall Street to notice. It's been a tremendous under-the-radar run we've experienced because almost nobody wanted to acknowledge it was happening. I don't know anyone liked the oils. Today, though, seemingly out of nowhere, I must have heard at least maybe read a half dozen pieces arguing that now it's time, now's the time to buy the oil stocks because they're so attractive. Bye, 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 bye. To which I say, are you kidding? Sell, sell, sell. The oils were attractive six weeks ago. They're much less enticing now. These stocks were riding like mad during the whole month of July. It's just that nobody of alleged import seemed to know it. So what do you do when everybody suddenly jumps on the bandwagon of a story you've known for a long time? Well, it is pretty obvious, isn't it? Sell, 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 sell. See, but I know that probably sounds counterintuitive. Maybe you bought an oil stock or an oil ETF today thanks to all this buzz. If that's the case, you might have bought some Halliburton from my charitable trust because we decided to sell some into strength. We choose to sell, not buy into enthusiasm because we own too much oil and gas and we like to sell into enthusiasm. Much of our stuff was purchased at much lower prices when nobody liked them. If the stocks keep roaring, the trust will keep selling because this is the perfect moment to ka-ching, ka-ching. I point all this because why? Well, I think a lot of people are misled whenever they hear about what seems like a brand new thesis. In reality, the oil thesis is far from new. You might not be be late if you bought a great oil service stock today like Halliburton, but you certainly ain't early, are you? More important, you're coming in after the easy money has already been made. We don't want this to happen on Mad Money. Yet so many people do it. They buy after a big move, and they often end up coming in right at the top, which then sours them the entire asset class, and they think it's rigged against them. This happens all the time. Today, classic, Jeffries, good firm, decides to upgrade Eli Lilly, in part because of the success it's having with that Munjaro, the revolutionary new drug that checks diabetes and causes you to lose about 20% of your body weight. So today, today... Today upgrades. Today, today, today recommends a stock. Today, after a 43% rally, including yesterday's spectacular 15% spike, one of the largest single-day moves I've ever seen of a large-cap stock. That is so wrong, it is ridiculous. You nothing! You had to buy Lily before we got to Fabulous Results, not after. How could you have known to, to, to buy it ahead of time? Well, we certainly knew. We talked about it every day here. I've been telling you this Manjaro could be the best-selling drug in history for ages. To upgrade the stock today, it's almost farcical. Ah, uh, but you say, Kramer, you still like Lily. What's wrong with recommending it now? Simple. The timing. The timing is wrong. Remember, I'm always trying to teach you how to identify great companies and then buy their stocks at the right price. You don't buy the stock of Lily here. Stock jumped nearly 15% yesterday, for heaven's sake. At this point, you got to wait for a pullback or you just got to say, I missed it. Because if you chase a stock after such a tremendous move, you're likely to come in near the top, which will make you feel like the whole business, again, is rigged against you. But the business is not rigged. It's just full of momentum chasers who tend to give bad advice. Don't listen to them. You need to increase the odds that you won't be hurt by the hype. Let me give you another example. Very good analyst from Roth MKM just came out with a note saying that STZ, Constellation Branch, you know of Corona Modelo, doing well. In part because it's been a 
a, a huge beneficiary of the problems in Bud Light. Hmm. I mean, like, no kidding. Constellation's only rallied some 50 points since the Bud Light backlash started hurting sales. But Dell Especial has been the best-selling beer in America since May. We devoted a whole segment to it over a month ago. Now, of course, if you didn't know the story, you might read this piece. By the way, the guys like the stock the whole time. I'm not picking on them this one. Uh, you, you, you might buy the stock today, though, because you read the piece. Now, I'd much rather actually sell Constellation up here. It's not necessarily too late, but a huge move has already been made. It's nowhere near the optimal time to buy the stock. We're not telling people in the trust to buy it here. One more Celsius. We drink this stuff all the time. You probably see why I'm doing it, why I'm talking about it as fast. It's Celsius. We last had the CEO of Celsius on the show May 13th. The stock is at 133. I think he told an amazing story. I said it on air. I said, wow, smoking. Today, with the stock up 29 points in a single session, closing at 172 and change. Now I heard everybody's excited about Celsius. They discovered it. They want to buy it now. Great. Me? No way. When I see this kind of move, I want to wait for a better opportunity because the odds are good. It'll pull back before the next leg higher. And you want to play the odds. Now I want you to go back to last week. We had the legendary Larry Williams on the show, greatest in market historian I know. Larry told you to sell my beloved NVIDIA. He said nothing can go straight up like this stock. He said it even though he knows we own NVIDIA for the Travel Trust. I'm absolutely not a seller. This is an own it, don't trade it stock for me. But you know what? Larry and I can actually both be right at the same time. Because the right answer depends upon your time frame. Larry's going to be dead right short term. The NVIDIA's been going down for the past couple of days. It's probably not done. He respected my positive long-term view, though, but had no illusions about the stock's parabolic move. Those are not sustainable. Right now, Larry's looking very right short term, and that's what he cares about in this, in this instance. Longer term, I think you're going to get a terrific entry point by NVIDIA. And that's how we both can be right. So I want you to think about all of this before you buy a stock. I need you to understand that you might be buying after a big move, which is usually a mistake. Do not buy momentum. Do not chase, bottom line. My goal is to get you to stop chasing stocks that have had huge runs. Because when they inevitably get hit, there's a very good chance you'll feel like the whole game is rigged and you'll give up on the entire asset class of stocks. And that is the worst mistake you can make. Let's go to Eric in Michigan. Eric. Jim, I want to talk about Rocket Mortgage today. Okay. That's a tough stock one. Is, go ahead. Yeah. I'll, you got the floor. Go ahead. The stock is trading in the $11 range, which is near its 52-week high. Can you see this stock doubling in the next 24 months once the Fed starts cutting rates later next year or even in 2025? Okay. If the Fed starts cutting rates, this stock probably does go up another 50%. I do. That, that, I mean that, 5 0. But I still think we're going to have a couple rate hikes because I think the economy is still smoking hot. Most people don't agree with me on that. So I probably am more negative shorter term than most people. But that's how I got to play it straight. straight. Michael in Massachusetts. Michael. Hi, Jim. Uh, great to talk to you. Longtime listener and watcher of your show. Oh, thank you, buddy. Um, I, I was watching and looking into Broadcom in May, and yeah. then, as we know, it had a very quick run-up, and I didn't want to chase it. And I, I'm wondering how much of a pullback it could possibly have here before I, like, jump in and I want to acquire a small position okay. of them. First of all, I like Broadcom very much. It is down 70 from the high. Now, it's going down with NVIDIA because there's a story that NVIDIA can't make all the product that is needed. That's what's driving that's down. This is joined at the hip with NVIDIA. It had a very big spike up. To me, I look at it. It only yields two now. Big buyback. I, I pay. You know what I do? I pay 800 for it. I would not start here at 850. Let it come in. Let it come in. That's the best way to play it. All right. Look, no matter what I do, I'm never going to stop. This, I tell you, is my theme for the year. The rest of the year, the market is not rigged against you. It's just filled with momentum chasers who give you bad advice. Listening to them and giving up on stocks entirely because you've lost money could be the worst mistake you can make. On Mad Money tonight, one that I like, Kellogg, right at the bottom. On track to split into snacky and cereal business by year end. Don't give up on that one. What do investors know what to do? I got the whole plan here. I'm getting the details from the CEO. Then Penn Entertainment just penned a $1.5 billion deal with ESPN, bringing the sports broadcaster's brand into the gambling arena. Let's go. Let's find out all about that. And Dana makes all sorts of components for everything from passenger cars to those big rigs. And after running nicely, maybe it's time to buy this pullback. Bad Money's back. Stay tuned. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. 
Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.